Hey guys, good morning or good afternoon, uh, depending on when you're playing the video. Today we're going to introduce the Day of the Dead uh, artwork. Um, you guys probably have heard of Coco, Pixar's animated film, uh, but uh, there is some hist historical aspects related to uh, Coco and the artwork and, and the style that... Um, that many of the Hispanic cultures uh, um, celebrate. So I'd like to go ahead and tell you a little about uh, the Day of the Dead and then we'll talk about some artists and uh, allow you the opportunity to engage in some artwork. So the Day of the Dead is a holiday celebrated throughout Mexico and around the world in other cultures. Um, as you know, uh, or may know, um, the Spaniards did uh, come over to um, North America, and Mexico is a part of North America, and these were indigenous cultures some 2,000 to 3,000 years ago, and uh, the Spaniards did actually witness uh, these celebrations. Now, please understand a celebration um, is a cultural tradition, um, and uh, at this point in time... Um, uh, the, the Spanish conquistadors, who um, you probably have heard of uh, Hernando Cortez and some of the other European explorers, uh, witnessed these types of uh, celebrations. Um, the, the practices that occur during the Day of the Dead uh, um, are a variety of uh, of celebrations of the, the passing of relatives and family members. Often uh, they will um, give gifts in, in, in remembrance of those people and, and obviously some of the different objects that are listed below uh, identify um, what is being offered. So once again, uh, the holiday focuses on the gathering of family and friends, praying and remembering those who have passed, those who have died. Um, this uh, Mexican Day of the Dead um, is an opportunity once again to remember loved ones. So uh, often you'll see different uh, artistic designs. Um, one of the words that I'd like to, to introduce to you is symmetry. Um, Think of this uh, object as broken up into halves, and you'll see that the left-hand side, this part, and the right-hand side are equivalent. So this is um, a, a reflection, per se. Um, often you will either see a horizontal or a vertical reflection. Now, obviously, this is vertical up and down. Horizontal would mean left to right. So um, you can kind of look at the, if you were to break the skull up into um, halves, this is symmetrical. The right-hand side is pretty much representative of the left-hand side. Think of it as a reflection. Often, much of the artwork has symmetrical aspects to it. Um, sugar schools and other common treats are, um, are created and designed um, to, uh, to uh, represent um, the quality of life. Uh, once again, uh, these are different offerings um, designed to, once again, uh, reflect upon the diseased, or the de deceased, not diseased, <laughs> deceased relatives. Uh, the skull symbol uh, it has some uh, historical significance uh, with the, the ancient people, the Aztecs, uh, some thousands of years ago. Uh, in the present day uh, era, modern era, um, the Hispanic cultures uh, will use paper mache and paper skulls um, throughout the celebration. You often see uh, a variety of colors um, and flowers. The marigold uh, is a a flower, um, and apparently it it it, it signifies um, vibrant colors and a sense of celebration. So once again, today you will be learning a little more about uh, Day of the Dead and then also taking a look at different examples. Um, you'll see they're incredibly colorful. Um, and then once again, you can kind of see if we were to break this school into halves, uh, the symmetrical aspects that are, are being displayed.
the left hand side once again if we broke this in the half the left hand side is almost identical to the right hand side very vibrant beautiful patterns Uh, one thing I thought was pretty neat is uh, if you think about uh, this uh, celebration, um, you know, the symbols of rebirth uh, and metamorphosis occur. And you, you can obviously see with the monarch butterflies, what is metamorphosis? Well, uh, obviously a caterpillar um, goes throughout the life cycle, um, metamorphoses uh, into a butterfly. So think of the, the whole life cycle where um, you have a pupa and then all of a sudden um, through the chrysalis it, it changes and, and is now a beautiful butterfly. So a transition and kind of that signifies once again that, that, that life and death and then the, the rebirth of a, of a spirit um, in a different place. So this brings us to an American artist named David Lozo. Um, he was a, he is an American artist. Uh, he um, is a children's book uh, maker or artist. Um, he has uh, begun um, implementing or creating uh, artwork uh, inspired by the Day of the Dead. He uh, first uh, became attracted to art with pinstriping. You can see uh, hot rods and fancy cars often will use these designs to kind of um, add a nice style or flavor to uh, the vehicles and that kind of led to um, what he now does. He does a lot of uh, guitar um, artwork inspired by once again the day of the dead um, and uh, you'll see that skeletons and um, guitars and roses and flowers are pretty prominent within his work so I'd like to go ahead and play a small video about David Lozo just to kind of inspire you today you will be working on some day of the dead artwork um, Lozo um, is very passionate about Day of the Dead. My name is David Lozo. I'm a Southern California-based artist who specializes in Day of the Dead style artwork. I think like with music, life is a journey. From the beginning to the end, the chords, the chorus, they all make up these experiences that you have. And at the end, it all comes back around. I think my art really just tries to show those ideas of things past, things present, and things forgotten. I grew up in a household that was fully supportive of music. Um, I took piano lessons as a kid. My mom is, is a classical piano player. That support of music always filled the house. To this day, there's a music room, there's a grand piano in my, in my mom's room where she plays every day. Being surrounded by that creativity, even though it wasn't art, it was still that energy, seeing someone sit down and make something. I went to college, I got a graphic design degree because my mom said I had to have a job that would pay the bills, not just be a starving artist. Um, so I really got to enjoy the creative side of you know, in a real world environment that you, know, you can have an art job. I didn't know that you could do that. It was about seven or eight years after college, snowstorm back in um, New Hampshire where I'm from. Trapped in the house because you can't go anywhere because it's three feet of snow outside. I was moving some things around in the apartment and found my old paint stuff from college, my old supplies. I said, oh, so I started playing with those. And as I was working with those you know, techniques again, I realized that design was not filling some of the void. I had an urge to do more creativity, really found this spark to start following that again. And, and really started painting more, kind of sketching, just really playing with everything, all different mediums, trying to find a voice to what I like to do while keeping a day job. So I was sketching at lunch, I was drawing after work, and that went that way for three or four years, kind of relearning the skills and really just having no rules or boundaries and just kind of finding my voice again. I came out to California, my girlfriend having lived here, um, I was excited about the opportunity to change. The art scene um, in New England, it's very traditional. It's pictures of boats and lobsters and fish and, and seascapes. It was nothing really inspiring. I think when the opportunity came up and I, it was just time to try something new, to take a risk, to jump at something and try and start my life different. 
my first experiences in San Diego in one of the Day of the Dead festivals was just seeing the marigolds in the cemetery, seeing these pictures of loved ones along with the soda they drank, the food they ate, their favorite sports team, kind of all the happy things that would remind the family of their life. It really seemed the core of what I wanted my art to be, to capture that moment, to give that remembrance, but in just a pure, innocent way. There was no sadness. It was more of a happy experience. And I think that was really the core foundation that really gave me a direction. Doing live demos is really a key to what I do. I love working out there in front of a crowd. So to be out there and be doing live demos really crafted the paint style. I discovered gouache, which is basically like an opaque watercolor, and that really kind of gave me the direction. The transparency matched so well with the line work that I finished my paintings with, and that acrylic, gouache, and enamel combination gives my unique look to my image, but also lets me craft and move fast and kind of capture what my head sees. Even though I don't play an instrument, I feel like the crafting of artwork, the pieces I use, the brush, the paints, the canvas, the steps I take, it's the same as using pedals and effects and different amps and kind of building a sound. Both of us are trying to reach the same voice, the same imagery, the same package at the end, and using everything available to us to do that. My iPod is like an eclectic trash can. It is full of everything from rap to hillbilly to country and everything in between, and it really helps me paint. I spend long amounts of time on the road, time in my studio. Music is the soundtrack. Because music is such an important part of my life, I was really excited to get the opportunity to work with Fender on a line of guitars. We even got to go to the factory in Ensenada and watch it being made. Seeing the artwork actually come out there and seeing it on the guitar was the first moment that really sank in that this was happening. To see these guitars coming off the line, to see them shiny, to see my work on there, it really struck the chord that this is real, that the Fender guitars and my work are going to be out there. The unique challenge of designing work for guitar body is something I had not had to do before. Most of the time on the custom guitars I'd done, it was full coverage. We were designing around strings and pickups and having to leave room for the bridge and making sure the work flows around. It's something that really has to take time to craft a composition that will really accentuate the curves and the structure of the guitar. Another project that mirrors this journey of the guitars is my kids' book. The same concepts, the same love of music really resonates throughout the book. It's about two little skeletons who find their parents' album, and they spend the next 25 paintings dressing like albums from Johnny Cash to ACDC and all the bands in between acting out who they are and really finding their voice, and they find their true voice by being themselves. And I feel like that's really kind of the correlation with the artwork that I'm doing now is the right artwork will find you. The right guitar design, the right the concept that you love the most will be the one that speaks to you. I can't play a guitar. I can't play any instruments. Painting is what I do. But I imagine that sharing the voice is the same. The same inspiration, the, the crafting this and putting yourself out there and releasing it to the world. I can share that experience. I feel like that's a camaraderie that artists have, that artisans have, that everyone has some little piece of in their life, something that they nurture and craft and then release to the world. And it's that little piece that I think we can all share. So you will be designing a Day of the Dead um, worksheet that we've pre-printed or copied for you. And once again, uh, we'd like you to kind of remember uh, some of the aspects of the Day of the Dead artwork, the, the symmetry that is involved, some of the vibrant colors. But once again, um, please use your artistic freedom to create whatever your heart desires. Um, you may use colored pencils, mark markers, crayons, or watercolor, dependent upon what your teacher provides for you. Um, another really cool enrichment activity uh, at the end of this art activity could be um, watching Coco. Some of you have seen uh, the animated film by Pixar, Coco. Uh, the amount of, uh, of artwork that depicts Day of the Dead is quite amazing and spectacular. So once again, uh, thank you for allowing us to do a little um, small educational um, tutorial on the Day of the Dead and some of the artwork that uh, has has inspired other artists to emulate um, this historical uh, tradition. Have a great day, guys. Bye.